So the store had some very nice looking oxtails today. So I thought to myself, let's make some tacos. As we start with some oxtails. I've got some lovely looking oxtails here and they have a very decent amount of meat on them. I was lucky to find all decent sized ones this time. All we have to do right now is hit them with some salt on all sides, please. But before we actually cook them off, we have a small bit of prep to do first, starting with some chilies. These here are two poblanos and three jalapenos. I just cleaned them up by removing the stems and seeds. Even though the seeds, while well, mostly the placenta, which is the white stuff in the middle that the seeds are attached to, will make it spicier, cooking the seeds will turn things bitter on you, so best to always remove them. If you want it hotter, just use more of them or hotter chilies. I'm breaking them down into smaller pieces, only to make more room in the pot, as you will see in a moment. Then we move on to a couple Arbol chilies, if that's how you pronounce it, for a bit of heat. Also a couple, and I completely forgot how to pronounce these exactly, but they have good flavor and are spicy also. Use whatever chilies you have, by the way. And a couple of my favorites, Guajillo chilies. Basically, just remove the stems and knock the seeds out and they are ready to go. Now, leaving the peel on, just cut up an onion in sizes that will fit into whatever pot you have. And also take a whole bulb of garlic and just cut it in half, peel and all, and add that to the pile. For this type of cooking method, I try to use whole spices whenever I can, starting with about a tablespoon of cumin seeds, a couple bay leaves, and about a teaspoon or two of black peppercorns. You definitely don't have to be exact on measuring here, folks. The vessel of choice for cooking this is a Dutch oven with an enamel coating. And I finally got my hands on one of these made-in ones. This thing rocks some serious heat retention. On medium heat, after the pot has heated up for several minutes, add a good bit of some avocado oil or any neutral oil. We are going to first brown off the oxtails. I'm going to do this in two batches because if you overcrowd the pot, you won't get the color that you want on them. This is what you want to see before you start flipping them around in the pan. Make sure to brown all sides of them also. So so take your time with this step. When all sides look like this, go ahead and remove them from the pot and start on the next batch if you need to do batches like I am. Once they are all looking lovely, you should have a good amount of rendered fat and oil in the pot along with some decent fond stuck to the bottom. So straight away, add the chilies in. Mix them around and get them all coated and add the lid. I'm basically just cooking them down a bit so that everything else will fit into the pot. But it's always a good idea to saute your veggies first anyway, if you can. After a couple minutes, let's add some spices, not the whole spices quite yet. And you don't have to use these exact ones if you don't want to. This is just what I have on hand. First, I have some ancho chili powder, followed by some Kashmiri chili powder, which is an Indian spice that I really love to use, and a good amount of ground sumac. Mix that all up well, and then add in the onion and garlic ball. I'm delaying to the last second to add in the whole spices because the pot and oil is very hot and we can toast it off real fast this way. After mixing that up, go ahead and throw in the whole spices. You could have toasted them in a separate pan first, but I just knock them down to the bottom and keep them moving to toast in the oil. When the smell of cumin starts to hit you, this is when you want to prevent them from burning and also deglaze the pot at the same time by adding some beef stock. At this point, I add in all the oxtails, evenly distribute them on top, and then add the rest of the stock to just completely submerge them. Put the lid on and bring everything up to temp. When the liquid starts to come to a simmer, you want the lid on and into a 350 degree oven for three hours, and then one more hour with the heat turned off to let them rest in the residual heat afterwards. While we wait for those oxtails to become something magical, we do have a bit of work to do, starting with our sauce. It's typical to use sour cream here, but I went a different route and have some plain Greek yogurt. Next, we want to brighten it up, so zest up a lime and toss it in. How much zest depends on your taste. I also added in the juice of half the lime for this amount of yogurt. The beef is going to be fatty and rich, so we want a contrast and texture in every step of this, by the way. I have a bunch of cilantro, and I just cut the very tips off to discard, then finally chop up a good amount of the cilantro stems. It's fine if some leaves get in there, but I'm going for the bright flavor with some crisp crunch to it. Just run your knife over it a few times before adding the stems into the mix. Now just mix that all up, add a pinch of salt for seasoning, and our sauce is ready to go. Pop that little MF in the fridge for later. Next, we want to thinly slice up some purple cabbage. Remember, this is about texture and brightness of flavor. You can use lettuce if you want, but I think that this is better. Here's a pro tip. 
Shock your red cabbage in ice water for two reasons. One, it will stay crisp way longer in the fridge. I'm talking a couple weeks. And two, the cabbage won't stain everything the purple red color and mess up the look of your food. A good tip for coleslaw, by the way, if you don't like cabbage staining all the coleslaw. You can do this with lettuce, onions, and many kinds of produce. Let it sit in the ice bath for a few minutes and you are good to dry it off with some paper towels. Now that can sit uncovered in the fridge to continue drying off until we're ready to use it. Here, I'm just dicing up an onion and chopping up some cilantro to mix together for an additional topping, along with dicing up a couple tomatoes also, so that we now can move on to our tortillas, which I would usually make by hand, but I thought that I would try the food processor method this time. Starting with 450 grams of flour, followed by 15 grams of kosher salt, and also optionally 12 grams of baking powder. Mix that up a bit real quick before adding in the fat. Traditionally, you usually would use lard here, but I had to try this with Wagyu beef tallow instead. That's 130 grams worth. Recipe courtesy of Chud's Barbecue. Once the tallow is in, I pulsed it up a good bit until the flour has a coarse texture to it like so. Now, all that's left to do is add in 250 grams of lukewarm water. If I had the proper attachment, I could just drizzle the water in while mixing, but I had to add it in a couple installments. I will note that I had initial concerns with using this particular processor because of the blade configuration but I thought I'd give it a try anyway. Once the water was all in, only thing left to do is let it run for a few minutes until a dough forms and it starts bouncing around in the machine. After a few minutes, there was no dough and I knew by feeling the sides of the plastic that my water was way too warm when I put it in. By five minutes of mixing and no dough, I knew I had pretty much screwed the pooch on this one and a little voice inside my head kept on saying, you fucked up. Shut up! We're gonna get this done one way or another. I also knew that the more I let the machine run, the more friction was being caused and heating up the dough even more at this point. I could have added some more flour, like I would do if I was doing this by hand, or I could have just scrapped the whole thing and restarted and you would never know my mistake. But that would be kind of a dick move, right? Especially since I never do test runs on my videos. So I shut the machine off and moved on to the next step, which is let it sit for a little over 30 minutes. After the rest time, it had developed into a dough, though extremely sticky. Not exactly what you want for tortillas. What I should have done here was just use my hands and kneaded it for a few minutes on the board. I portioned them into 50 gram portions and yes I know this is not how you properly portion tortilla balls but it's too sticky to do it by hand. I'll show you that way another time. What I did end up doing was roll them into little balls first. Since they didn't quite have the right springiness to them I let them rest another 10 minutes and then re-rolled them. By agitating them a second time they started to firm up. Normally you just have to roll them once. And since I do not have a tortilla press, I'll have to use a rolling pin here. I'm not saying this was easy, since the dough was definitely underdeveloped and a bit too soft and sticky for this. You definitely fucked up. I said shut up, this will work, I promise. But eventually I was able to get a rhythm going. Using a hot skillet, I was able to pull off some tortillas. And while they weren't my best work, I still got the job done and the beef tallow gave them a nice flavor at the end. Tortillas should always be nice and soft and pliable after you cook them off. Store them in a towel to keep them warm while you work. Anyways, after three hours of cook time and one hour of rest time in the oven, the oxtails come out and they are ready to finish. Remove them from the pot carefully as the meat is fall off the bone tender at this point. Just look at how nice these are. Using another vessel and a fine strainer, strain all that wonderful aromatic liquid into it and make sure to spill shit all over the place too, okay? Press down on the braised chilies, onions, and garlic and get all that juice out of them best you can. Then discard everything in the strainer because at this point they have given up all their flavor. Let that liquid sit while you pick all the meat off the oxtails. You want to do this while they are still hot, but I did let them cool down just enough to handle. And use your hands, not a fork or a utensil, unless you want to break a tooth on a possible bone fragment later on that you couldn't feel with a fork. Once you have all your meat harvested, go back to the juice and skim off the layer of fat on top. By letting it sit like you just did, it lets the fat layer develop on top and separates from the rest of the liquid. I'm just scooping it into the pan with the bones because this will all be discarded. If you are really super insistent on getting every last bit of grease off the top, you would need to refrigerate the whole thing for several hours and then you could peel it off by hand. But I'm hungry now and if a little fat is left in the juice, I think I might just survive this time. I don't need to use all the juice here, so I'll pour half into the saucepan and then half I can freeze for another recipe. I took the sauce pot and reduced the liquid by half. We do want extra concentrated flavor 
offers here, trust me. And the last step before building the tacos. I promise it's the last step, but this is so important because we want to give the meat little crispity edges by tossing it into a hot cast iron skillet. When the meat is starting to crisp up a little bit, add small amounts of your reduced liquid into it. Only add little bits. We want to add intense flavor back into the meat, but not make it soggy. I didn't use all of the liquid for this, just enough until the beef had the right flavor for me. So taste as you go, folks. Now that our meat is perfect, and I mean you have no idea how perfect this really was until you make this, let's finally build our tacos. Our warm, funky-shaped tortillas go down, onion and cilantro. This is a barrier so that the meat doesn't sog up your tortillas. Your ridiculously awesome, juicy, and crispity oxtail meat, some cool, fresh, and bright-tasting yogurt sauce to cut the richness, crisp purple cabbage for crunch factor, and some diced tomatoes, just to give it what it needs. All right, these look fantastic. It only took, what, almost six hours to make? Wow, it takes longer shooting the video. I can't wait to dive into these. Let's give them a try. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Excellent tacos, everybody. It's not spicy either. Mmm. Can't stop eating this. The cabbage with the texture, the yogurt sauce with the cilantro stems. Nice, nice texture, flavor. That meat, it's rich, but it's not greasy. This is what you want, guys. Oxtail tacos. All right, guys, as always, if you like this content, make sure to subscribe, hit that like button. You can watch my content on YouTube, Odyssey, Rumble. Follow me on True Social. Until next time, guys. Make sure to treat yourself right, cook yourself something good, make yourself some oxtail tacos. Thanks so much, guys.